Today, Binance founder Shengpeng Zhao is ordered to stay stateside ahead of his sentencing. Kathy Wood's ARK Invest sells more than $5 million of Coinbase shares as its price hits a 19-month high. And all tab capitals Greg Moritz explains why he believes Binance can thrive despite trouble with the feds. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World, I'm Talia Kaplan. Crypto prices in the green this morning. As of noon Eastern, Bitcoin traded close to $38,000, Ether rose nearly 2%, and Binance's BNB token climbed more than 1.5% exactly one week after the company's founder, Shengpeng Zhao, stepped down from his role as CEO and pleaded guilty to breaking anti-money laundering laws as part of a more than $4 billion settlement with U.S. government officials. Okay, sticking with Binance for our top story. A federal judge ruled yesterday that CZ must remain in the United States, at least temporarily. Zhao, who lives in the United Arab Emirates, was released on a $175 million bond last week and has a sentencing hearing scheduled for February 23rd in the U.S. His lawyers have asked for permission for CZ to travel, noting in a briefing that he voluntarily flew to the U.S. for his guilty plea. Prosecutors, however, requested that he be banned from leaving the country before his sentencing date. Now, the UAE does not have a formal extradition treaty with the U.S., and so prosecutors argued that Zhao is a flight risk, but one that, quote, could be managed by requiring him to remain in the U.S. and preventing him from returning to the safe haven of the UAE. A U.S. District Court judge in Seattle said that the Binance founder cannot return to the UAE until the court, quote, resolves the government's motion for review. Next, Binance's new CEO just outlined big changes coming to the world's largest crypto exchange. In an interview with Fortune, Richard Tang said that under his leadership, Binance would adopt a conventional corporate structure. That would include a board of directors and increased financial transparency. Tang didn't provide specific details on these plans, but he told Fortune that he has a quote, robust timeline. Tang is the former CEO of Abu Dhabi Global Markets and global head of regional markets for Binance. He also admitted that Binance made missteps in its rapid growth phase, but has learned from those mistakes and is committed to transparency. Now, it's been exactly one week since Tang was named as Binance's new CEO. Last week, Tang posted on X that he accepted the role so the company can continue to meet and exceed the expectations of stakeholders while achieving its core mission, the freedom of money. Last, Kathy Wood's ARK Invest has offloaded thousands of shares of Coinbase as the crypto company's price hit a 19-month high. According to daily trade notifications from the firm, ARK sold nearly 44,000 shares of Coinbase and bought more than 143,000 shares of Robinhood. Those shares are included in the ARK Fintech Innovation ETF. As of yesterday's closing, the Coinbase shares were valued at more than $5 million and Robinhood's at more than $1 million. The ETF's latest holdings data shows that Coinbase continues to have the heaviest holding in the fund, roughly 13% or more than 1 million shares. Robinhood is currently at number 11. Now, we reached out to the investment firm for the reasoning behind yesterday's moves, but didn't hear back right away. Yesterday, we told you that ARK Invest offloaded more of its grayscale Bitcoin trust holdings, about $3 million worth to be exact. All right, back to Binance for our main story. I spoke with Greg Moritz, the co-founder and chief operating officer at the crypto hedge fund Altav Capital, about the settlement and why he believes the crypto exchange can thrive even more under new leadership. You argue that Shengpeng Zhao's move to step down from his role as CEO of Binance is a strong signal of the maturity of the crypto market and shows that even those who operate outside certain parameters will be held accountable. You also argue that the crypto exchange can flourish even more now. Why do you think that is and what else do you think this signifies? Absolutely. So I, I definitely think it is a strong signal for the crypto markets that the issue is being resolved and that CZ is being held accountable. Binance is one of the uh, largest exchanges, it is the largest exchange in the space, and they grew very rapidly. And when you are growing that rapidly and in a, uh, in a space where there's a lot of innovation, it's oftentimes the rules are a little unclear. And uh, still, it seems like uh, Binance has violated some of those rules and they're being held accountable. And that's a good thing. We want the crypto market 
to be held to the same standards as every other financial market. The crypto market has operated a bit like a wild, wild west in the past. But as we see more institutional capital coming, more sophisticated investors, more regulatory action, it's going to become more like a normal market. And that's good for investors. And that's good for the projects that are receiving funding through these through this process. As far as the transition um, to Richard Tang, that is hugely optimistic, I think, for Binance. Um, he is a very well-respected uh, leader. He has a very strong regulatory background, having worked with the Monetary Authority of Singapore, having worked in Abu Dhabi. He, at this point, the largest challenge facing Binance is regulatory, and he is someone who spent his entire life innovating in the regulatory space. So good for Binance and good for the industry as a whole. So it sounds like you think Binance will survive after its settlement with U.S. officials. I mean, Bernstein put out a research report last week arguing that Binance will remain the dominant crypto exchange internationally, despite the outflows following the settlement here in the U.S., and that Binance's reputation with retail customers outside of the U.S. has remained strong. Do you agree with that assessment? I agree with that assessment completely. But if we look at the outflows from Binance over the last few days, they've been quite minor um, in, in the scale of things, a few percentage. And, you know, a few percentage of Binance means huge things for some other players in the space. You know, Uniswap and decentralized exchanges are going to grow as a result of this. And that is also positive long term for the crypto community. But um, Binance itself uh, there's no reason to think they'll be they'll be anything other than fine. Um, they have a very strong reputation and are still the greatest source of liquidity in the crypto markets. I spoke with Cordell contributor Rich Rines last week, and he argued that the Binance settlement is a, quote, win for the exchange and the crypto industry. Do you agree with those statements? It's certainly a win for the crypto industry. Um, the crypto industry is filled with legitimate law-abiding players that have wanted to do the right things by regulations. And we want to work with partners that are doing the right things by regulations. And so for Binance to come further into compliance means that a lot of players in the crypto industry will be more comfortable doing things with them. Um, and it means that greater regulation, again, is good for institutional capital, which is good for the crypto industry. As for whether it's a win for, for Binance individually, I, I'm sure they would prefer not to pay fines. I am sure uh, uh, CZ would prefer not to have as much time in court as, as he has. Um, but overall, I think long term, it's going to just increase the strength of Binance. What was most striking to you from this Binance settlement? And what do you think is next for the crypto industry? Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong told CNBC yesterday that the crypto industry can finally close the chapter on a litany of scandals and problems after Binance was hit with that historic settlement by the U.S. Department of Justice. Do you agree? I do agree. Uh, I think that this is this is a significant turning point for the crypto industry. Binance, for a very long time, has been the massive player that's done the least to be to be regulatory compliant. And so for them to be changing their stance and to be clear, they have been changing their stance over the last few years. Um, but for them to come even further in line and get this matter settled and stop having, um, uh, you know, no offense, the headlines about it like over time. This is uh, this is all things that are positive for the crypto industry. Right. You know, we we want we want an industry that is that is making headlines because of the innovation happening in the space, not because of uh, possibly bad actors and what they did in the past. So it's an opportunity to move, move forward past that. So what do you think is next for crypto markets? Last time we spoke was in September. That's when you said you expected to get really strong price action in Q4 of this year, and especially early next year. And here we are seeing crypto prices move higher. So I got to say, so far, your forecast has come to fruition. What do you think is behind the recent price action? And do you still think prices will continue to move higher? 
Thank you. And, and I do. I think, uh, we are still early on in that bull cycle. You know, we've seen over 100% growth of last year and crypto is an exciting asset class where I can say that's kind of a tame growth year. So I think that we're going to see even higher growth in the future. And I think it's driven by a number of things. You know, this regulatory clarity aspect is certainly one of them. So this, this helps pave the way for that growth. And then, also, I think that we are seeing ETFs uh, in the U.S. become uh, quite imminent. I, I expect to see those um, approved within the next quarter or so, if not sooner. And I think uh, that was, is a massive uh, potential influx of capital for the crypto space. And then I also think we're seeing the growth of decentralized finance. Um, uh, decentralized finance has become more and more sophisticated every year and this year they are as com as competitive and as interesting as centralized exchanges are and they do that without the risk of trust in any person because it's all code so i think that the industry is continuing to innovate i think that there is strong price pressure um both from a fundamentals perspective in terms of um the growth in ET from ETFs and regulatory. And I think that there is strong technical analysis reasons and historical cycle reasons to say we're just beginning. I think, you know, barring any unusual events, I think next year is going to be better than this one. Now, Greg Moritz also weighs in on other recent crypto headlines and whether he expects more legal action against crypto companies in the U.S. next year. You'll be able to check out his full interview over at CNBC.com slash CryptoWorld. Okay, that's all for today, but we'll be back again tomorrow and we'll see you then.